eight on these new cutouts. It's a beautiful angel. I'm going to buy that one. I love it. This is one of his Cadillacs. I love that saying, it is not where you've been, but where you're going right now that counts. That's one of my favorite ones. It's very important. Exactly. Thank you. I'm honored. These are some new animals that Howard has visions of. Uh. I was just saying that these are some of the new animals that you're having visions of now. They're very interesting. Very, very interesting creatures. Creatures I've never have seen. Me neither. Well, Howard, I think you're the only one that has seen them. <laughs> Low in the valley, high on the hill, at the sunset is calm and still. The birds quit singing till the morning dew. They come out to start all new. But earth days are so few, make it to heaven, for I love you. That's great. I love this one. <laughs> I made up a lot of songs. I know. To a feeling. And you know it. God speaks to you. You, uh, you know God from this time out. If he ever speaks to you, you'll know it. It's just certain people who choose the things that Biden and Paul and Marine are called. Biden made us want you to. Or he wants you just to be a janitor and keep the church clean. That's what not yet. Maybe God would uh, want you to be a teacher. To impress you to be a teacher. To impress anybody is to say something that you can feel what they said. And people sometimes can speak to you. And the feeling it comes from is 
goes deeper in understanding than the words you'd have to say. You might just walk up on a man who's done a good deed and don't know anything about him and a stranger. And what he'd done and everything and all would impress you in your heart and tell you more than you'd ever get him to tell you in words. When people get something talking about don't follow a feeling, don't follow a feeling. No, you don't follow the devil's feeling. You right. follow the holy feeling. Mm -hmm. And the holy feeling teaches you right. And there's been many people that was impressed to not kill herself. And they listened to their self, self instead of the, the spirit. And there's uh, been a lot of people that's done a lot of evil things that the good spirit told them not to do it before they done it. Which they done how many times. And they just overcome their spirit and do it to their will instead of his. Mm. That's why you got a conscience that analyzes things, tell you whether from God or whether from the devil. He that, he that confesses not that Jesus has already come in the flesh is an antichrist. An antichrist is somebody that claims God without Christ or claims Christ without God. That's an antichrist. The Buddhas and the Muslims both are antichrist and they don't know it according to the Bible. But since they just throw the whole New Testament away, it don't bother them. But they're living with the New Testament, which the prophets all spoke of before it ever come here. Jesus Christ told them, said, if you, if, you would believe, if you would believe in Moses, you would believe in me. He said, Moses spoke of me. Before we ever come here, Moses predicted him. And that just made them much, much angry to him. And when he told him he was the son of God, there was angrier than ever. You know what's the matter that bunch of people back in them days? Just like the Democrat and Republicans up here. Mm -hmm. Afraid somebody's gonna get their office. They knew that Jesus Christ would have went in as a king any time or anywhere. Because the things he could do that would have put him in there. And him telling them, my kingdom is not of this world. He didn't come here to be a king in this world. And his kingdom not even of this world. Because he set his kingdom up when he was here. And the people that were looking for him to come here and set up a kingdom is a long ways behind. He set up his kingdom 1993 years ago. Hmm. And that kingdom was set up in the hearts of his disciples and apostles. But his kingdom was. And if a people had sense enough to, to, to know a first reader, they would know, he says, my kingdom is not of this world. And then he took the kid upon his lap and blessed it. And uh, that was his king, like unto his kingdom. His people were humble as a child. He said, except you become as humble as a little child, you'll know why I see the kingdom of God. Because he was teaching the kingdom right there. His kingdom is humbleness. His kingdom is the Holy Ghost. His kingdom is a, the New Testament. All of that's his kingdom. He set that up. He said when he was here, said to, said to him, My kingdom is now within you. When he healed that man, Lazarus brought him forth. He was setting up his kingdom. He showed him that he could do something no king on earth could do. He could raise the dead. He was setting up his kingdom. He is our king, but not of this world. He's our king of a new heaven and earth that he's making. And his church and together we must pray where they'll go. And standing on the outside of the portals of it, if he'll let them know that there's nobody ever been in that new heaven and earth but us, that we're going in there first as a prize of a bride and a groom. And it won't be like an Adam and Eve world. They come into a world that they had to go a test. But when we go in that world, there won't be no testers or nothing. Enter thou in, a good and faithful servant. I've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. 
What is a many? A new heaven and a new earth. And if it's a new heaven and a new earth, it's prior to where God is now. He didn't say he's going to rebuild over the heaven where God was. He's talking about a new heaven and a new earth. So if there's a new heaven and a new earth, uh, if I understand it, will be another whole outfit. Ugh. And uh, we'll be able to go to <coughs> go to God's country and maybe no telling how many planets we can visit because space don't mean nothing but God. If he's sending you to Mars, all he'd have to do is just say Mars and you'd be there. That's incredible. Just like the TV cast to turn it on in New York. When they turn the switch in New York, it's on my TV. Yet. When do you suppose this is going to happen? Uh, when do you suppose this is going to happen? What's that? This new heaven, new earth, is that heaven? Oh, he's probably done got it finished. Probably wait. He's had 1,900 years to build it. And she said that and made us that promise. Well, if his father can build a, a world like this in six days, five days, six days, and rest, rest the seven, what kind of a man, what kind of a world do you think Jesus could have in 1900 years? Yeah. And the 2,000 year of millennial reign will soon be up because that's, uh, from 1993 to 2000 will be the 2,000 millennial year since he sent the Holy Ghost here, prayed the Father, and sent us his spirit. And that's the reason people get saved and they're happy and they're satisfied and they feel security. That there ain't none like it because that's God with you. That's the evidence He's with you and you're not afraid of anything as far as your soul is concerned because He takes care of it all. Ugh. And uh, when Jesus come here, He left the inhabited place. He left heaven inhabited. Probably millions of angels. And God and I'm all alive. When he come here, this was his second planet that was inhabited. There was millions of us here when he come here. And there's millions of the planet he left when he left to come here. And he had to be begotten of the Holy Ghost into the womb of a righteous woman and become in our body before he could speak to us and shake hands with us and all. And that's who Jesus was, God. You don't separate God and the Holy Ghost and, and Jesus. If you get the Holy Ghost, you got Jesus and God. If you get God, you got God, the Holy Ghost, and Jesus. To divide them three is dividing the Godhead. That's very silly, and uh, and it's uh, don't bear out to the Bible. It's to go get saved around a few days and then get sanctified and run around a few days and then get the Holy Ghost. And that's what I tell them people. It ain't mm -hmm. like that. The Holy Ghost is the last thing that was left here for us. And the last thing to guide us. And the last thing to give us inspiration. And then I go say, I've got to get sanctified before I get the Holy Ghost well, the Holy Ghost is what sanctifies you. And if you get any kind of sanctified and like the Holy Ghost, that to me, that's just sort of like bull, you know. Mm -hmm. They don't know no difference. But I'm telling them the difference. I hear a Church of God woman not long ago get up there and say that. She says, it's true, you can't divide the Godhead. You see, we have a Godhead for our Constitution of the United States. Our Godhead here is the senators and the congressmen and the President, just like God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, but that's over heaven. This is over the United States of America. And the reason them, the reason all three of them are not, not as one because they always separate against one another. They're divided. God and, God and the Spirit and Jesus have never been known to be divided. They won't never be divided because there's one. And if things is one, that's what I'm trying to get the world to do, to become one united world instead of the United States. To become a united world and never nation.
information in the world and come to the meeting and decide together what to do. And a Hitler bunch and a uprising wouldn't have a chance because a coalition had come together and voted out. But where, you, where you're a communist and under a dictator, one man, when he says war, you're going to war, no matter what the other four billion says. But before they go on a war, if the world comes together in a coalition, before they go on a war, there'll be a world meeting. And they'll all decide together about it. If they decide to have a war, they'll all go in there together. And the rest the one that wants war, and uh, they'll muck Saddam, blow them up if they don't listen to them. How There'll be a bunch of nations that won't, won't be one man doing that. Do you suppose Hitler was a dictator. What he said went. There's nobody in Germany that had a power like he had. Nobody could stop him. And he's got one brain. Well, the whole United World together would be more than one brain. It'd be for our safety of the world. And I done told him if it didn't unite, they'd never make it. And just go on in war like they've been doing and killing out generation after generation. Two times they've killed a few billion people by the time they have a world war, first and last. Send the hundreds of thousands here and hundreds of thousands there. And it's just a bloody, awful thing. And the one that started has got nothing out of it. They're gone. Tojo. I told Japan when they was here the third time interviewing me, right out in front of this house up there. I said, y'all go home and study history. I said, see what happened to people who persecuted Christianity. Start with Hitler and Tojo, your old empire. What happened to them? What happened to the Roman Empire? What happened to King Pharaoh? What happened to King Herod? I said, you go back and study history and go to every one. That's all you have to do, just look over history and see what happened to people who once persecuted Christianity. They're all gone. They've got nothing. Rome, Italy is the greatest nation in the world at that time. Now that's a ruin and a museum for people to look at its scraps. Finding some of them in the volcano with their babies in their arms and covered in ash. Ugh. And three weeks after that, oh, I hear a Japanese story. <clears throat> I heard on that television right there. About three weeks <clears throat> after they was here, I believe. And it said Japanese one time killed all the Christians in Japan. They said. Japanese is now studying history and coming back to Christianity. Just exactly what I told them to do. Just think about a whole nation going home and doing what you told them to do. Hmm. And when they studied that history, they found just what I told them. What happened to all them people that persecuted Christianity? A real, true, honest-hearted Christian, when you persecute him, you're persecuting God and Jesus Christ. As much as you did unto the least of these, my little ones, you did it also unto me. They've never been progressive. They never will be. Ugh. The White House communists didn't want that war with Saddam. And they was trying their best to keep the president from going over there. That ought to show any dumb tale that there was for the communists. They're communists herself. Now since the communists have yielded and a great percentage of them turning over, they're left barehanded. All they can do is just turn marijuana loose and free marijuana, legalize dope, stuff like that, and destroy this country that way. Like Khrushchev said, he would take this country without foreign accounting. He's talking about shiploads of cocaine. He's talking about poison and baby medicine. He was talking about doctors like old Thunderbird for several years fixing all the women where they couldn't have babies no more mm. and all that stuff.
They had a swell plan to take this country, and they could very well do it unless God stepped in. Cocaine could take this country. Our country now, uh, the businessmen are some million dollar deals and things like that. They have to get other people to run their business. They get on cocaine, they ain't got enough brain to run it. Japan is getting ahead of us and smart. They don't fool with stuff like that. And the one that said he'd take us without foreign accounting, he wouldn't have fooled with it. Or he wouldn't have let his country fool with it. He would just pour it in here on the United States and run our kids from a time before they even finished high school, run them for life. And they spend their lunch money for that. And they're dishing it out now, still dishing it out. And all the FBI's in the United States working again it and rescuing a lot of it. And Khrushchev, dead and gone, but his dream would have worked if the United States had just let it work. Not long ago, a bunch of people got poisoned on food. Well, that's what terrorist job is, to mess around and, and uh, contaminate a bunch of meat in a place where they work, or uh, plant a bum job where they work and turn over the papers to, their, to the ones that does that and all that. To, the terrorist is a terrible organization. That's the worst war the world has ever had to contend with, It's terrorist war. Because you don't know when one of them is going to hit, you know, when one of them is going to strike, and any time that they get a chance to kill you without any evidence around, that's when they kill you. And one old man over here in the United States has killed, I forget how many hundred people, got away with it. Because he don't kill people if there's any evidence around. He waits till he catches no evidence, it don't matter who it is, he, to kill everybody but them. And the terrorists have a way of knowing one another. The terrorists could put poison in food and have a mark on it. And all the terrorists that seen that mark would know not to eat it. That'd be safe. It's the, it's the other guy who get killed. It's a terrible warfare. And God moved him out before he got put it in effect, and these little countries <coughs> joined in and got it started. A terrorist. And Christ spoke of that. He said, the perilous time shall come, like it's never come before and never will hereafter. That's a terrorist. Look what they've done in New York. And look how well the thing's guarded and how many people there are. They have, terrorists have to be smart and know what they're doing. They have to know how to build and put bombs together in their house. Smuggle them in trash cans in all kinds of ways. And put them in plastic where metal won't pick them up and all that stuff. It's a terrible thing to try to catch a terrorist that's been trained. And then when they catch them, they just put them in a penitentiary and give them a home TV to look at and pay for our tax money and feed them. I'm not doing nothing. There ought to be a government, given the government rules to, to help uh, uh, people serving a lifetime sentence and not working for the government. They ought to be working for the government or making something for the government. They ought to be worked and help clean up the government. They ought to help build roads and highways. They ought to be a working or fine out and supporting the government. But they ain't done nothing to support the government. They used to when they, back in the old days. Ugh. I tell them they'll survive much longer. The resources will last long. See, that's one war that food wasted enough crude oil to run the world a year. And it cost millions of dollars to get them stopped and get them back to operate. And the oil right down to the lowest that's ever been on earth. And then him setting 600 oil fields apart. Mm. Oil well. 600. Billions of gallons of oil burnt up, and oil pouring out on the sand and running it forever where nothing was growing. Killing the birds and fowls, contaminating their water, and destroying their muscle shells and things that live on. Like you dig a ditch for others, you fall in it yourself. 
I'm not fucked around too old right now. They're in their own ditch. Ugh. They made their own hardship. charge dumps your sink will suck and uh, I figured there might be a the world's water trap where it was so often when that thing dumped the ocean just went into it sucked it in it sucked them planes and everything in there and, and then our water stream has been getting lower all the time and if there is a world water trout and it's sucking things in there, it's stopping that hole up. What about the possibility of um, Atlantis? Do you believe Atlantis existed? Which? Atlantis, the lost continent. There was a continent that they said used to be in the Atlantic Ocean called Atlantis and it's sunk below the earth. The water, I mean, yeah. But the water sunk. Yeah, the land sunk. Yeah. Big building in there. Yeah. That's somewhere down here in the south, south, somewhere that city sunk. I seen it under the column down under there, 30, 40 feet high, still up. Buildings. They say that that's down by the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, and people going, going down in there hunting rooks around them houses and things, and divers, you know. Ugh. Now the city of Sodom tomorrow, when it burned up, it sunk. It went down where, where they call uh, the Red Sea. And the water goes in there and don't never come back out. And it don't run off from the water. It just goes in there and goes somewhere. And, and they put big tiles down in there and pump the water out of it and went to the bottom of that thing. And they found the streets of Sodom and Gomorrah, the sidewalks down there. And God burnt that city up, it sunk down in there. And uh, I got a book somewhere about that, where they discovered it, where that city went to down there. See, they can put down big pipe big around this house and fasten them together and just keep letting them down until they go to the bottom and they pump that water out and they just go down in there and see them things. Wash them off and look at them. They found the sidewalks of Sodom and Gomorrah. Down in the bottom of that, that thing. Where the water don't never run off no more. And they found Jesus on this original road. That ought to be evidence to the Muslims and Jews and all of them. And that's what it is, it's a warning to all of them, telling them Jesus was really here. There's no doubt about that. And they don't think he's got here yet. It's probably they're following traditions, family traditions, and things like that. I don't believe in following no traditions, or nothing except just the New Testament. There's enough in the New Testament to save everybody in the world. They don't read it, they don't study it, they're not going to know about it. And no preacher preaches it all at one time. It's been preached through the years. And the time a preacher preaches to you one time, it take them a year or two to preach it all. And you can sit around your home and read it all once a year. Like I did. I read the Bible about 50 years every day. Right. I don't even read the Bible, period, now. I haven't read it in months. Because I know what it, it's in there. And anybody can mention anything in the Bible to me, and I can tell them that. <clears throat> Just like a doctor learns what he knows about medicine and bodies. 
He ain't going to school now. He done been there enough to well me. I had 50 years reading, studying the Bible, preaching. And uh, you can mention anything you want to in the Bible. I can tell you whether it's in there or not. And a lot of preachers misquote things a little bit, which don't change. It's just not exactly like what the Bible says. Howard, <coughs> what about the ark? What about Noah's ark? Well, I've seen these two men go in it and take pictures of it. It's a big, long outfit with old black stalls all through it. Some look like they're coal smoke, dry rotted or something. But they're still the standing. Where is it? It's over there on Mount Moriah and on Russian, Russian territory. I've seen a lot of pictures over here a while back. Seen it under the ice, like looking through a glass. Do you have visions of Noah's Ark? No, I've seen it. You know, in them pictures. Difficult to get up there on that mountain and go down into where it's at. Some lost their lives. But they found it. And the time they found it is when they were supposed to find it. Because the world that don't believe in God, they become an infidelity across the world. They don't even, don't even know that they've got a creator or nothing. Like that. Philip, that's the reason I'm a stranger here. Because people like you have a breath you breathe one at a time comes direct from God. You couldn't live one hour without God. A grasshopper couldn't live an hour without God. Or a whale or nothing. Uh, man don't make life. There's no record in any history where anybody made real life except God. Life is part of God. That's the second Adam in you. What life's in you, it comes from God. And every time no man died to himself, or no man lived to himself. Whether we die or whether we live, we're, we're God. We're from God. A baby can't even be born unless God. Unless God permits it. It says, no man dieth himself, no man liveth himself. But we'll live or die with God. And uh, that kid being taken, like he was talking about, it was probably designated for that one job. <coughs> when it finished it, that's all it had to do here. And there's no use keeping it in a world like this and punishing it here. When it's finished its job and it's been go home, where it comes from. You remember when Jesus was trying to tangle him up, and they brought that woman to him and told him that they caught her in adultery. You ever read that? This woman is trying to tangle Jesus up. And when a woman stepped out on her husband or anything, they stoned him to death. They wouldn't put up with that, like we do. They wouldn't do away with the hanging scaffolds, and when a man sentenced to death, he died. And that's what I tell them here in this world. If you, if you got a law, and you committed a crime to be electrocuted, electrocute them or do away with your law, either one you want to. But when you don't like to keep them, then the government violated the law. The law is to, the law is to like to keep a man when he comes to that sentence. And when he's supposed to be electrocuted and they don't like to keep him, they've broken their own law. And I say, do away with the law. If you're going to do away with the electrocure, do away with the law. Just let get you electrocuted. My grandson had done a crime, and the law said electrocute him. I say, electrocute him or do away with your law. Well, my son ain't no better than somebody else's poor son. 
what I tell them. I have. Well, uh, I met some of Alvis's old stars, and I, I sat down in the reception at the table with Art Linkletter and his wife and talked to him. And I asked, I asked him to let him give me my award. And when I got my award, I had to very little to say. I told him, I said, the rules of your city here in Hollywood is harder to keep than the rules of Jesus Christ. I said, the rule of Jesus Christ is, he that believeth shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Instead of getting a boo, I've got as big a hand as I ever got on that. When I come off of that stage, I said, there was all colored lipstick all over my face. Hmm. And they said, Howard, you was the star of the show. They're hungry for something like that. And I never had dealt, had done any business with a con artist. And he's beating me out of money all the time. I realized it. Ugh. And I told my wife, I said, if I don't work with a con artist, how will I ever tell whether I can help one of them or not? And then when I got back, of course, I told him when I left California, I said, if you don't send me my part of the money, I said, you'll pay it to somebody. I let him know he wouldn't get to keep it. And about a year after that, that sit so down war come up, and he's from over in there. And his mother was there with him, she's from over in there. Probably rich, she's probably supporting him. And they said he's bankrupt, so he didn't have nothing. And if he's from Sudan, this country was also butchered. So uh, he got what I told him. And what I got out of it, I left $110,000 worth of messages out there. And that $9,000 one's in a big museum out there. Mm -hmm. I'm preaching in Hollywood. Somewhere in Hollywood, I'll probably be preaching until Jesus comes, because they pay big prices for that message. They ain't gonna throw them away. Oh, sex all over the world. Uh, a romance store and a love store is all right. That's nature. But this program comes on here and you see them having sex and everything. And that teaches kids that that don't know nothing about it ain't supposed to know nothing about it until they get a certain age. And they become whorehoppers 10 or 15 years early. It's said that uh, this great whore that setteth up on many waters of a great city and said she would spread her whoredom and all and sell out the world kindly, you know, for money. And these sex movies is popular because that's the nature of humanity and they don't never teach to carry it out an order. Sex has a rule, and sex is a great thing. God created it. It's for a man. It's for the glory of a man and his wife, and that's what the rule of sex is. Let every wife have her own husband, and let every husband have his own wife. That's the rule of sex, and it's not condemned, and uh, and it's not evil. Without sex for 130 years, there wouldn't be a living thing in the world. That's how important it is. It's our re reproduction structure. And uh, people going around having no sex with anybody that wants them to has uh, missed the mark. And people that sell their bodies are called whores. And, uh, they do, advertise right here on this TV. Do you believe that actors and actresses that sell their body for film? Uh, do you believe that actors and actresses that sell their bodies for film, are they whores too? Every time you have sex with a man, take money for it, you're selling your body. 
What about if they just show their bodies on film? What about if they're just naked on film for for a part or? Well, they're supposed to marry their own wife for that purpose and live with her never at home anymore. Right. And if they go out and have sex, sex with other, other women that committed adultery against their wife. Because I don't think it's necessary for people to show their bodies on film. I think it's selling the wrong thing and I think it's exploiting people. Well, uh, when they go to a certain thing, Especially women. They go to a certain level that's wrong. See, God made a woman for the glory of a man. And it said in the last days, they'll leave the natural affection of a woman. And men will burn in their lust one towards another. Working that which is unseemly. Well, that's come to pass. They want it legalized. They should have never come out in the open with it, period. If you're born that way and have sex like cats, you shouldn't never let nobody know it. If they come out in the open with it, and, and just bring it out and just tell the folks it's all right, it's not again the law. There'll be probably millions of people who will have sex before their time, just on account of that. I think most of them just don't believe in God, period. Infidels. If you don't believe in God, period, the Bible don't mean nothing to you. If you don't read it, you don't study it, it's not your book. And you've missed everything. Missed it by doing what you want to do instead of doing what the rules are. Ugh. If you don't know the law here in the United States, you'll be able to break it and I never know it. Ugh. I'm covering the world with the rules of sex. And I notice now people are teaching more kids about things like that. And uh, things are not mouth.